Well, welcome to the last episode of the Winter Series. If you join me for this one, and we're down at the well, massively famous complex linear fisheries. But yeah, there's also a few cats about. Um Well, welcome to the last episode of the Winter Series. You join me for this one, and we're down at the, well, massively famous complex, Linear Fisheries. And I've come down with the attention to, uh, to fish in St. John's, as that normally does a few bites in the cold weather. However, after walking around and speaking to a few of the lads, they're on for a couple of free days, and I couldn't really quite sort of get on to where the fish have been getting caught from lately. I did set up and chuck the rods out for a few hours anyway, uh, obviously I didn't catch anything and I decided you know what I'm gonna have a walk around and just see if I can get on a few fish somewhere else uh, so a bit of a change of plan really and I've come over well first port of call was to come over and have a walk around on Manor Farm and there's not actually well there was no one fishing on here this morning there's a couple of lads set up opposite now and yeah seen two fish out in the middle so I thought you know what that's as good as anything at least I've got a bit of space and uh, you know I'm on my own over here as well on this road bank so yeah we're gonna crack on and see if we can uh, see if we can nick a bite this this lake I wouldn't say like manor typically fishes a bit better later sort of it's mid-April it's absolutely awesome on here it's still you know has done a few fish over the last week it's probably done half a dozen fish in the last sort of six seven days and they're good fish as well you know this lake holds a lot a lot of big fish a lot of 40s um, so yeah, if we can get a bite, there's every chance that it will be a good one. So we're just going to have to try our best and see if we can winkle one out. So just to get going in this peg, I'm not going to do anything too extravagant. I'm literally just going to uh, cast out three zig rigs and um, I've had one chuck with a marker float and it's about 12 and a half foot deep out there uh, in front of me. So all I'm going to do is probably put a seven, an eight and a nine foot zig out, just all on little, little black highlights. Um, might dip this in a bit sticky sweet actually, just to give it a bit of a uh, bit of scent. And I'm just going to, sort of cast these out 
a few rod lengths apart, spread them out, three rods, and just sit tight. I just want to catch one fish just to get, you know, just to get off the mark, and then we can go from there, really. I don't think we're going to get, like I said, I don't think we're going to get too many opportunities on here. But if we do get one, there's a good chance that it could be over 30 pounds. There's some, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of big fish in here. So if we can just keep our eyes peeled, spot a fish or two, get the rods in the right area, I think I think we could scratch a bite with a, uh, a zig to start with, and then we can look at maybe finding somewhere to fish with uh, either some solid bags and maybe introducing a little bit of bait as well. So. We'll Fingers crossed. Keep the eyes, keep the eyes open. Have a cup of tea. Watch the water. Just keep an eye out for any uh, any last-minute shows just before it gets dark. now um, I had a quick rechuck just before dark just to put the rods back out they're more or less in the same place as where they were before that's the sort of area where I feel like I'm gonna get a bite and yeah I haven't changed anything just three black zigs they're just out in the pond uh, gonna see what the night brings I think it, well it you know it sort of looks good for a bite on a zig it's, it's clear it's cold typical zig weather really and just gonna see what happens if if I don't catch on a zig tonight then I'll have a look at doing something else maybe tomorrow um, I would like to fish on the bottom with some bait uh, maybe fish with a solid bag as well that's you know that's another option there's some there's a bar out to my left that the fish get on quite quite regularly so that'd be you know that'd be a real good area to put a solid bag on there obviously there's the old clear spot out in front um, just not sure whether it'd be too deep for bait fishing on that. So, but we'll just see. We'll see what the night brings. Um, it's, yeah, it's winter fishing, and this is what it's like. But it can all change at, you know, at the spin of a hat. I'm only looking to catch one fish from this session. Um, yeah, if any more than that come along, then that's absolutely great. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll lap that up. But. My main objective is just to sort of just to save the blank because you could, well, you could have one bite on air and it could be forty-five pound. There, you know, there's some very very big fish in this lake, and uh, the the average stamp is quite big as well. So and that's why we're that's why we're fishing. That's what I want to catch, and that's what we're going to try and do. So if nothing else happens from now to the morning, I will see you then with a cup of tea, bright and breezy. Well, I've given it a fair chance on this lake. Uh, I've not seen anything show since I've since I've set up on here, and uh, yeah, I was open to nick a bite fishing with them zigs. So I wound in. I went round and had a walk round St John's just to see if anyone was going. And there's a swim on the uh, on the side of the point swim. Um, there's one swim which is the middle point that's been doing loads of bites lately. Uh, not a lot else either side of that, but the the, the right hand side of that swim's just become available. And uh, I think what I'm going to do is is get packed up from here because I'm right in the teeth of the wind. 
and the rain and it's due to rain all day pretty much today so before I get too wet I'm gonna get this camp down head over there it's nice and comfortable there as well it's right on the back of the wind so it's the be ideal for fishing in this weather and the rain um, typical winter fishing typical gravel pit fishing you've got to be bang on them to be catching them um, yeah so right I'm gonna get this down and head over there Well, we're now set up on St. John's. We packed up from Manor. We got over here and it absolutely chucked it down. It was horrendous, which it was due. We knew it was coming and we just wanted to try and beat that weather, which we just about did. I still got a little bit wet, but nonetheless, we're, uh, we're now on a swim. Um, next to a swim, there's done a few fish. So hopefully we can nick a bite or two out of here. And uh, when I got in this swim, literally I got the, got the brolly up with three zigs out. They've been out probably about an hour and a half now um, but what I'm going to be doing now the rain's cleared off is probably going to knock up a few solid bags and uh, maybe try a solid the um, the lads that caught through the week on the fishery they actually caught just chucking solid bags out so um, yeah I'm going to get a few bags tied up get them ready to rock and we'll get these rods in get a couple of bags out and, uh, and just take it from there I will plumb up later and have a look at putting some bait in somewhere um, if I can find a nice spot then I might, I'm not gonna go mad if I do, I'm probably just gonna put like maybe three or four spots out, just something that I can just chuck a couple of bags on just to give an area for the fish. And I'm not gonna put a lot of food out either. I'm probably gonna just, just smash up a few bug boilies, bit of crumb, just put a bit of smell out there, that's it. Maybe a bit of liquid. Yeah, so I'm gonna crack on with that. I'm just going to uh, knock up a couple of solid bags to chuck out. Now I've dried off a bit. I've just been to the van and uh, got changed because I was absolutely soaked. So I'm just going to get these. There's nothing wet, like nothing worse than this time of year. You want to just make sure you're like fishing really comfortable as well. You don't want to be getting wet. I always make sure I bring plenty of spare clothes and that with me. But uh, yeah, just getting these solid bags ready. I just got a little 10 mil PB pop up. Little uh, uncoated hook length, which I'll show you now. Put this boily stop on there. So the 10 mil pop up, I'll just sink that with the weight of the hook. And there you go, I've got the, uh, just like the bag stem, three and a half ounce inline lead there as well, a short, four inch uncoated hook length, size six, six hook, and a 10 mil yellow pop-up. And that's all gonna go in a little bag of micro pellets, which I'll do now. The, uh, the bag mix that I use is always the mini crayfish mix. And the reason for this is because they're such small pellets. You just put your hook bait in there first. A few pellets over the top of the hook bait like that and then you just lift your hook length up sit your lead down on top of the pellets a few extra pellets in there just nestle that bag nicely lift the bag so it's sort of plumb center of the pellets make sure that it's dead center this will make sure that the bag flies nice and straight it won't wobble a few extra pellets and then it 
all I do then is get the bag, twist it round once and then just thump it down and then that you can see how much those pellets just compact and that's what makes the bag flow nice and straight, nice compacted pellets and just twist that round, a little bit of tape Pop that round there, a couple of granny knots just to tie that off. Can't be a good old granny knot. A bit like how Mozza does his shock leader knots. Trim the uh, trim the unwanted PVA off around the stem. Because this time of year, because obviously the water is quite cold, you don't want big blobs of PVA around your uh, around your stem when the bag's melting. So yeah, just trim that off. And then you can see that the bag is a bit like a pillow shape like that. That's fine if you're just chucking it like up to 50, 60 yards, but um, I want it to fly nice and straight. And especially it makes a difference. If you're, just, if you're just chucking solid bags out anywhere, then it doesn't really matter. But if you're chucking bags out of a bait, then always make sure no matter what distance it is, that you, you just fold the, uh, Fold the bottom of the bag over. Just lick the corners and tuck them in. And then you'll see that the difference is, the difference is unreal. Right, you can see how quick and easy that was to tie up. But like you can see the difference in the shape now. Really nice and aerodynamic. I can chuck that. I know that it's going to fly in a nice true straight line especially here where the wind's like a bit off our shoulder, off our back sort of thing. Yeah, so that's going to be ideal just for chucking over that boily crumb that we're going to put out. That'll just go down to the bottom, obviously melt, little yellow pop-up sticking over the top. A couple of spots of uh, bug crumb, just a bit of smell in the area. And hopefully we'll get a bite on that. The zigs haven't produced anything so far, so we'll, uh, we'll get these out and get ready, it's sort of like late afternoon now and we've probably got two and a half hours of light left. So I need to think about what I'm gonna be doing because it'll be dark soon. And uh, yeah, let's get the other one tied up and then we'll uh, get the rods out. just sorting out after sorting these bags up just tidying up my tackle and that and the right hand has peeled off on the zig which is encouraging so at least there's a few fish in the area hopefully this will save the blank then we can concentrate and try and string something together get the bait out get the rods out just before dark Sit back, have a nice cup of tea. Yeah. Nice. Nice, nice, nice.
way. Well, there you go. The first one of the session. Always nice to get off the mark. But yeah, it's uh, got the blank out of the way for this time of year, for sure. And we can concentrate on uh, trying to get something, something else sorted. Ideally, I want to be catching them uh, over a bit of bait or on bags, just to try and try and string a few together. But still, you got to fish sometimes for how the fish want to be fished for. But yeah, nice, nice. About twenty-two pound, perfect. But going to um, yeah, we're losing like fast really now. So I'm uh, going to get this one back, make sure I've got everything sorted going into darkness, where hopefully we get a couple more chances. Yeah, happy. Nice. Well, there you go nice 26 pounder perfect nice you know nice to get a second fish as well absolutely brilliant nice little change as well you know just goes to show that you can catch them on sort of multiple tactics yeah bit of smell nice bag over the top perfect this one uh it's like a block of ice this one it's absolutely freezing but then it's the middle of February, so uh, you'd expect that, I suppose. I'll pop this one back. Yeah, have a nice cup of tea. Lovely, jubbly. Cheers, mate. My girt lusher. Well, there you go now you know why i wanted to come off the zigs and get on the bottom because st john's is quite notorious for these things i put two on the bags and left one on the zig and this is what happens when you uh when you fish zigs at night on st john's you catch these so yeah i think i might now i've caught that carp on the bottom on the bag I might just rechuck this rod and put all three on the deck now. Yeah, this is actually probably one of the only very few catfish that I've held. So count yourselves lucky because I've caught loads of these out of here and I very rarely, rarely ever get them out of the water. So I feel very privileged. Let's get it back. <laughs> morning and yeah strange old night last night really <laughs> I uh, caught that carp on the solid bag and I had two rods on the solids and I left a uh, I left a zig out on my left hand rod like fishing towards the center of the pond and I've caught plenty of catfish out of here 
like plenty. And just like, you know, normally when you're zig fishing, you're fishing like three rods all on zigs or whatever. And uh, I only had the one out. And well, I think I've hooked 10 now on that one rod, these catfish. Like they must be in a frenzy out there or something. They're just, they're out there. They, a couple of weeks ago, two lads fished in the swim next door and they hooked 20 in a weekend. Um, so if you're looking for a catfish, like little black and red zig or little black zig, six, seven, eight foot off the bottom out there, you game on for one. Um, but yeah, got the ump with that at three o'clock in the morning, basically, and uh, just put another solid bag out. So I've got all three out on solid bags. Uh, and yeah, obviously, you know, I caught that nice 26 pounder um, on the solid bag, just over those uh, few spots of crumb. Now, I've got two rods on the crumb and one rod just fishing a single solid, like just a little bit past it. So, uh, which is obviously the rod that was the zig rod. So yeah, but I'm not sure how I feel about whether the swim's gonna sort of, you know, how the carp are gonna feel if there's that many catfish out there swimming around above like in my swim. Because obviously you wouldn't know that, or I wouldn't have known that if I'd have just chucked three solid bags out. I wouldn't have known that those catfish were there because you like you know I wouldn't have caught them. But just having that one rod is like sort of giving me an indication of like that those fish are in that swim, you know, in my swim, swimming around out there. And if I was like, I mean, some of the catfish in there are big, they're 60, 80 pound. So I think they're even bigger than that. I think they might have even done 100 pound there. Like when I used to fish it years ago, we used to catch catch quite a few then up to sort of 60, 70 pounds. Um, and yeah, I mean that one last night, I don't know how many I've caught over my lifetime, but that, that one last night is the first one that I've ever held up for a picture or whatever. I've just never, never really been fussed by them. Never got one out on the bank, always, you know, they're quite hard to handle on the bank. And um, I know, you know, I know that I've caught them and I've just unhook them and, and let them go. Uh, but they're, you know, they're quite impressive. They're not, not what we're here for, but there you go. But yeah, it's, uh, yeah, we've got the day. The wind is supposed to get up in a few hours time, up to 40, 50 mile an hour. Um, so I don't, don't quite know what the, uh, what the weather's gonna do. I was just looking at two blokes setting up their brollies down on the bottom bank and um, they're facing them right into the wind. So that could be interesting later because I reckon their brollies are gonna be about 40 yards away by the time that wind picks up. Whereas I am, I'm like you know, I've got the wind sort of plumb off my uh, plumb off my shoulder here, which is kind of why I come in here because I knew that the weather was going to get rough. And I didn't fancy fishing in a massive side wind or right into the teeth of a, a huge wind with driving rain. Um, but yeah, I've got you know, I've got till mid morning, sort of early afternoon, so I'm going to uh, ping a couple of these solids around. If I see any showing fish, if not, I'm just going to sit tight, sit tight with those two over that that bug boily crumb and one you know just off just off to the left a little bit further than my bait and uh, yeah just see what happens but you know I've caught two lovely 20 pound carp and considering I'd done a night on another lake um, and then moved in here so effectively I mean up until now I've probably been fishing less than 24 hours and uh, and I've caught two two lovely 20 pound carp, you know, a nice 20, sort of 22, 23 pound common and, uh, and that 26 pound mirror. So as far as fishing in February goes, you know, I've, I've caught what I come here to catch. Don't get me wrong, you could come here and fish the same tactics tomorrow. And if you're on them, you could catch a dozen, a dozen or so easy. And that's, you know, that's the beauty that I love about fishing on St. John's is that you can go from sort of getting a, a good trip with like what I've caught now with a couple of 20 pounders um, and it can just switch like that and you can have an absolutely blinding session but that, that's all part of winter fishing you know like you can't tear at a new one every time you go it just just doesn't happen like that in the winter everything's got to line up you've got to get in the right peg the right weather everything like that and um, you know but it's, it is a good water you know, and, and like I dread to think how many fish I've caught on a solid bag. They will always get you out of trouble. It seems like, you know, 
it's like, oh, it's just a solid bag, but it's not just a solid bag. There are absolutely like wicked tactic to use through the winter. They're awesome. You can put whatever you want in the bag, whether you want to crumb up a few bug boilies, whether you want to put some, you know, I just use them with that mini crayfish mix. They're just no nonsense. You can have a few tied up in your bucket and then you can just like clip them on them and whiz them out whenever you want. Um, and yeah, but they are they're definitely worth a go. Definitely worth, you know, if you're doing a bit of bait fishing and you just want like this time of year, just a little bit of bait, a little bit of smell. Um, and then you can just ping them over the top. And if any fish come over your baited area, they'll hone in on them solid bags, like instantly, like straight away. They're almost like a spot within a spot. Um, so yeah, but we'll just, you know, we'll sit tight. We'll see what the, uh, see what the rest of the morning brings. Hopefully we'll get a chance. If not, we'll do a little, uh, do a little update in a bit. going to literally have a quick look at what bait we're putting out and literally just got some soaked 12 mil bug boilies just soak them in boiling water the night before I was coming fishing and that makes them really really soft you can see like every one of them is I just put the boilies in the bucket bring it up to the top with boiling water and then just put like a splash of bug food liquid with them and that all draws into the bait and makes them nice and soft and then for the bait that I'm actually going to use for fishing, all I'm going to do is just roughly smash a few up like that. Just so it just takes the edges off of a few of them. There's a few powdered right up, a few in like quarters, halves. Like I say, I just want that on the bottom. Just going to make a bit of smell. And obviously, because it's fairly windy, I can make these into like you know, not like rock hard balls, but normally when you'd be like putting crumb out, if you put it out loose, well at the minute the wind's like 45 mile an hour. All right, we're on the back of it, but it's still, you know, still strong. There could be quite a bit of tow. Um, and you can just make them into like claggy little balls, which I'll show you how to do now. And this will just get them down to the bottom. It's only about sort of 12 foot where we're fishing. So that's like that. And then all I'm going to do is put a little splash of bug food liquid. This is like the more concentrated one. Because obviously I want a lot of smell, not a lot of food. And when you do that, you'll see that it makes it go a bit stodgy you can see that's almost like it's almost like a sort of like a wet paste but you can just literally and that won't go down in a clump that'll get like halfway down and just sort of like start smashing itself up and flutter down but that's perfect absolutely stinks smells lush the bug I love it but yeah it absolutely stinks and that's going to keep plenty of smell on the bottom all those little bits and yeah, that's it, real basic for this trip. I don't feel like I need loads of bait, don't want loads of bait. You know, I want my solid bags to be doing the, uh, to be doing the, uh, the pulling power, if you know what I mean. That's just gonna get them in the area grubbing about. They're honing on those bags. That's perfect. That's it, dead simple, but quite effective. solid bag over that boily crumbs gone again yeah perfect the uh, well 
looked I was quietly confident of a bite. You know, I know that that tactic, you know, I know it works on here. That's the reason why I was doing it. But, um, you know, what it's like, you just don't matter how many times you've been fishing, you're just always sat there thinking like, you know, what's going to happen or whatever. I just think I might have picked up my other rod. But, uh, yeah, it's nice that it's gone. Perfect, those solid bags, like, especially just over a little bit of smell always get you out of trouble that always sort of nick the odd bite yeah ideal No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 How about that one? Another 20 pounder, three 20s now, which is absolutely wicked, you know, for, uh, for February, it's brilliant. One on a zig, one on a PB pop-up in a solid bag over the crumb, and one on a fruity licious pop-up in a solid bag over that crumb as well. Lovely. It's, uh, yeah, it just goes to show that the tactics that you use you know, I use them because I'm confident in them. And uh, time and time again, they just get you out of trouble. Just knowing them sort of slightly little different applications, no sessions ever the same, but just tweaking the, tweaking how much bait you put out, how you put it out, where you put it out. That's the key to winter fishing. Just take your time with it, get it right. And these, uh, these fish like this, nice 20 pounder, they're never too far away. But I hope you've enjoyed it. Can take something from it put it in your own winter fishing yeah enjoy enjoy your fishing